Hi, this is Tina, Eclectic Treasure Hunter, and today I thought we'd talk about pottery. As you can see, I've got some pottery. A lot of this I've collected over the years. I am particularly in love with McCoy pottery, but I do enjoy and pick up several other pieces uh, for my own collection, but also for resale. So if there's anything you see here that you're interested in, let me know. And I guess I want to kind of start off by talking about how I got into McCoy, and it was quite by accident. I was at an auction, and I saw a swan vase. I saw this particular swan vase at an auction, and I just loved it. And it so happened at the time I was collecting swans, so that's what caught my eye. And so I picked it up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, i got to have this. And I saw it said McCoy on the bottom. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I got this home and I got to looking at it. And I'm like, this is really neat. And I started, that started me off. And then I didn't know it. But at the time, I already had McCoy in my house. I just didn't know it. I had pottery, plants, uh, things like this that I was already using in my house. So it was really funny when I went to discover I had quite a few McCoy I had already been utilizing. And what's fun about it is you should utilize your pieces if you can. I mean, there's some that might be a little too de delicate, but if you put liners in them and things that, um, you know, use them. These flowers are some leftover flowers from the lovely bouquet my youngest daughter Rachel bought me for my birthday slash Mother's Day. So I have a few remnants left in there. And so yes, I do use my items and I think it's fun. Another thing that uh, this is out of my daughter's room. I picked this piece of McCoy up. This is one of my favorite pieces. And she uses it to put her color pencils in and it looks so spectacular with that. So, you know, they're, they are still functional pieces, you know. Some, though, I just collect because they're cute and they're smalls that I, I like to keep around and fill in with places. Um, I picked this one up recently. I really love the color and design of it. So, you know, they're very prevalent today as they were when they were first made and what inspired part of this video uh, was also people talking about trends and what's what's the next new trend? What's on trend? And I don't know if pottery is ever really not on trend. I mean, the prices aren't always great for the people that are selling them. And the prices aren't always great for the people buying them, depending on how hot they are. But part of the trend I thought was neat to see, and I'm not promoting this magazine, I'm promoting the McCoy that's sitting on the top of this magazine. Oh my gosh. I My jaw dropped. I was at the library and I saw this sitting on uh, the magazine racks and I'm like, holy cow, holy McCoy, <laughs> holy McCoy. Uh, and this is happens to be Martha Stewart's collection of McCoy and the article read that she started collecting this uh, over 20 years ago, she says, in her article, and she liked it. It caught her eye. It was the, she started picking up several, several pieces, several different colors, and I do like them grouped in the same color. I don't know if it's picking it up, but what she did that I think really made the, the white, the cream of this pop out, and it's probably not picking it up so great in this, was she painted the back of the shelf a gray, so that really brought that the detail out on those. And then uh, she also has, well, there's several more pictures, but I'll share this other one here. She has some other colors that she collects. And let's see, hold on. <laughs> what is it with these cameras? You're always like doing things backwards, right? Anyway, it's alerting her. So these lovelies were in her article. And I just, it's just as beautiful. And it was so encouraging to see some old, you know, vintage and maybe even antique pieces, uh, you know, 
not that I have anything against the modern pottery or the pottery people that make the stuff. I just love seeing the old stuff being used and, and appreciated. So there's so much of it. Um, I saw this in a magazine. I mean, why not? Why not get the old stuff and put it in there, mix it with the new too, or with the glass or with the other media? It just is amazing. I think I'm eclectic, obviously. Oh, by the way, do you see? I finally fixed my mirror problem. My oldest daughter, Miranda, gifted me with this great eclectic treasure hunter background. So big shout out to her. Thank you so much. Such an improvement to what was there. So it cuts that glare from the mirror and uh, gives me maybe a little more professional look, even though I've got all this going on. But it, it is uh, much appreciated. I love it very much. Thank you. And also, I just want to say that there are actually several people, or several people, several pottery companies represented here. Some I want to keep and some I'm willing to let go. But uh, I, it just ranges the spectrum of things. You kind of have this really soft, and now this does look like Roseville, but it's actually a hall. And I think it's lovely. Uh, it's very nice, soft colors to it. And then you have your more mid-century modern pot pottery. And this is a red wing piece. You've got to be careful. It's called, it's a ribbon. And it's so mid-century modern. I love it. Absolutely love it. And it has a really kind of neat turquoise light blue in the interior. And this is a red wing piece. Uh... See what else? Oh, I have this other red wing piece I gotta share with you. And I want to I was going to sell this, but I kind of held on to it for a little longer. But I, you know, but look at the turquoise in this and look at the design of this. Now this I was thinking maybe was even 1920s, but I haven't done enough research on it because it just looks like an art deco from that era. It's well, the reason also it, it just the glazing has the crackling old feel to me, but I could be way off base. I don't know. I haven't researched it enough. I've kind of, I just really love the design and the interior color of this. Uh, the other, and that was a big, uh, wasn't it? I had it. That's such a bad habit. I can't help it. The other thing is, you know, you saw her group, her yellows, and I'll do that as well, but I also think that this yellow looks fabulous with this, I don't know if it's picking up the color, but it's like a gr radiated green in this with this soft yellow. Just looks gorgeous next to each other. And these are hall pieces here as well. Can't have pottery without a Royal Hager. Did I have it upside down? Yes, I did. Now is it right? This is a royal hair piece. Oops. Oops, my dogs are gonna be good. Be good. He's looking at me, he's like, I wanna bark. But mom doesn't want me to bark. Does everybody talk to their dogs? I'm sure I do. They talk back too sometimes. And then here are some royal hair. And these are called earth wrap pieces. <laughs> My heart stops every time I ding. Now my girl's talking to me. One of my girls. Shh. <laughs> uh, these are Earth Wrap by Royal Hager. Real nice. I mean, look at you could range, you know, your mid century modern looks all the way, you know, they're just such a range of design. And, you know, I'm not ignoring the figural pieces. I have a lot of uh, really fun, uh, I've got a couple panthers. I've got some just some fun things. Royal Copley has a lot of great pieces like that. And I do have Royal Copley in this batch as well. This is a Royal Copley. And, you know, they usually do uh, a run of different mixes of colors on the same vase. So you see this repeated design with different colorations. 
and uh, I love both of them. They're really pretty. And this, I love the coloring on this. You just have such fun pieces, practical, but beautiful. You can mix them with so many things with a great stack with old books or, you know, I have magazines sometimes next to mine. Uh, this piece I had to have because I know it's supposed to be a, more of a Scotty, Scotty dogs, but I have West Highland Terriers and um, they look very, very much the set, you know, alike in a lot of ways. So I love this piece. This is a good, great McCoy piece that I'm not going to part with. <laughs> so I just wanted to share, I put a shout out to seeing these great pieces featured on a magazine. I'd love to see more of this kind of um, promotion of this. So that was good to see. I also want to talk to you a little bit about reference material. There's a lot of things I haven't looked up to identify because so much is not, you know, does not have McCoy or, or Red Wing written on the bottom. And of course, there's the knockoffs which I very well could have some knockoffs in here. I don't know. But there are some great reference materials out there. Speaking of the library, while I was there, I was looking in their um, resources, reference materials. And there's this Colville book. I think it's fairly new. I didn't look at when it was brought out. But it's the New Dictionary of Marks. So that could be helpful. I'm sorry if the glares on that. This was happened to be in there and I think I have a rose. We had to pause this broadcast because of squirrels. My dogs are crazy about the squirrels. Anyway, uh, I picked this up because I do believe I have a Roseville piece but I uh, needed to get some reference material to kind of look it up. I I don't like to spend a lot of money so if I can find some stuff at the library that's great. This is another one I just kind of picked up on a whim. Uh, it was another reference material book. I thought I'd flip through it real quick. thought it might have some interesting stuff in there. I also have several reference books I've bought over the years. Uh, and I do like to get my reference books, like, used. There's a lot of, uh, I picked up some from bookstore, like a used bookstores. And Amazon online has used books, and most of the time they will declare the uh, condition fairly well, and I really have no complaints of what anything I've picked up so far or used. They're just, most of them are almost like brand new, so that's a good source. Also, I use Facebook groups a lot. Uh, there's so there's a Facebook group for everything. So if you're a Bacoy lover, a Red Wing, a Roseville, you know, Weller, and I think I only, this is my token Weller piece. I might have another one floating around. Um, kind of neat, has an ombre. There's just a group for everything, and they are so helpful. Uh, I mean, don't abuse, don't throw everything at them, saying, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this worth, you know. Um, try to do a little bit of research, you know, <laughs> but uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of pottery, that is, it is it is a good thing to invest into some resources that you have at hand. And some of those are just fun to look at, and I get a surprise all the time. I'll be flipping through, like, um, I have a McCoy reference book, and I'm like, oh, I have that one. Or, you know, oh, that one's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, well, that was a lot going on. Good Lord, those dogs went crazy. Um... Anyway, what I was saying was just, I'm going to have to pause this again, I think. Once they see one, it's they're on high alert. Um, there's all kinds of reference materials out there, different avenues to find it. Oh, the other thing I picked up at the library, they were having a book sale, which that'll be a whole other story about. But uh, there was some reference books for sale at the library book sale as well. So you never know. You can pick them up pretty cheap sometimes, and it's really, really a great deal. The other thing I want to mention is there is the uh, Pottery Lovers 
in Zanesville, Ohio, which many of you know is kind of the big place where like I think more than a dozen of these manufacturers were at. I mean, they're spread over the United States, but that was a big uh, area for a lot of these pottery companies. And they host a thing called the Pottery Lovers, and it is July 8th through the 10th. I don't know if it's already booked up full, but thought I'd mention that. Uh, might pique some people's interest, especially if they're, you know, reasonable driving distance. They can maybe check it out or in the area. What else was I going to say? I just wanted to say that I hope that I see more of these trends of, of pottery being used and um, or displayed. I, they're so fun. I think they deserve a lot more credit than what they've gotten in the last few years. There's so much out there to salvage and save. It's great to, to see posts where people get you know, thrifting and they get these great pieces that they have no idea that, you know, the history of and they find out and they're so excited about. I see a lot of that on the Facebook, uh, people looking and saying, what is this? And you can tell that they have sparked such an interest now and that maybe they're going to go off and start their own collection of, of pottery. So that's good to encouraging to see. And hopefully I spark somebody's interest here. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or um, pottery things that you would like to share with me, that I, I'm all ears. I always love talking about anything vintage, pretty much. So uh, thank you for watching my video.